Hello friends, Hank Smith here with another Deering instructional video and today we're going to learn about a very important aspect to your practice and that is listening. Listening is one of the most important things you can do because it internalizes what you're learning. And so there's different kinds of listening depending on what you're trying to do uh, with the song. There's listening to improvise, listening to other people actively. But the kind of listening that we're going to talk about is listening for analysis. And so that is the kind of listening that you can do with a score or a tab in front of you as you listen to the song and, and follow along in the music. Um, or it's something that you can do without the music as you're riding in the car or, or whatever, doing whatever without your instrument. And so in a perfect world, what we'd be able to do is isolate each instrument in a song. Sometimes you can do that, but they don't see a lot of that for bluegrass stuff uh, where they can take the banjo part out or the guitar or the vocal line or whatever. So what we're going to do is do that with our minds, essentially. And so when you're listening to a song, we'll say Foggy Mountain Breakdown by Flat and Scruggs. What you want to try to do is listen to that song on repeat. You're going to listen to it over and over again, but it's not going to be background noise on repeat. Instead, it's going to be very actively listen to each time it passes through the tune. So let's say you're listening to Flatten Scruggs play the Foggy Mountain Breakdown. The first thing as banjo players that we're going to be drawn to is the banjo. And in this particular instrumental tune, it is the lead instrument. So the first time through, you listen to the Foggy Mountain Breakdown, only listen to the banjo. Try to concentrate as much as you can on just the banjo. The second time through, only listen to the guitar. Try not to be distracted by the other instruments, the fiddle, banjo, everything else that's happening, and only listen to the guitar. Um, next time through, it's the fiddle. Next time through, it's the bass. Next time through, it's dobro, so on and so forth, depending on the lineup. Um, if there's a song that has vocals in it, that's the first thing that your ear is going to be drawn to. So if you are listening to a vocal tune, listen to the, the lead vocal first, and then when the lead vocalist isn't singing, Listen to what takes its place, which is a lot of times a soloist of some kind, the fiddle or the banjo or the mandolin or whatever. And a lot of times, especially in traditional bluegrass, they're going to emulate the melody, the vocal melody, with their instrument. Um, or they'll play something like it, depending on what style of bluegrass you're listening to. So the vocal line, that melody, continues throughout the song, even if the vocalist isn't singing it. So as soon as the solo's over and the singer comes back in, switch your brain back to listening to the singer. And then in another instrumental break, same thing, but you're only listening to what took the place of the vocals as opposed to some other thing that's happening. Uh, another pass through the song, you'll listen to the bass. This is a, this is a crucial listen. Uh, what is the bass doing? The bass will inform what happens, will inform the rest of the instruments on what to do. It holds everything together, as we all know. It's one of the most important instruments, if not the most important instrument in the ensemble for that reason, because it is the harmonic tonal center. This is the center of the music. And so there might be a cool banjo lick over top of something, but what is the bass doing? That's the, the direction that it's headed in. Um, so let's say you listen to Foggy Mountain Breakdown five times through, and each time you listen to it, you listen to a different instrument. The next time you hear that song, you're going to hear it very differently. You're going to hear those things that you didn't catch. You're going to be able to pick on little runs and little things that happen. Now, that being said, the more complicated the music gets, the harder it is to do that. If you're listening to a symphony orchestra, for example, you're probably not going to hear the individual violin parts. The lead violin part, sure, but the uh, supporting roles, probably not. So it's really difficult to do the more complex the music gets. So that brings us to our second point, and that is to follow along with the written music. So if you have a tab uh, you know, or sheet music, and you're listening to, again, say Foggy Mountain Breakdown, and you're looking at the tab of Foggy Mountain Breakdown, you follow the movement along with the song, uh, along with the banjo line, of course, because that's the part that we're focused on as banjo players. You can do that with, with any piece of music, and there's a lot of really great stuff on YouTube where it'll go through the score as the music plays and or maybe highlight some of the chords and things like that, because that's another thing that happens in this analytical listening, is that as you're following along with the tab, you're able to kind of identify not only where the chord changes are when it does change chords, when the stuff underneath the banjo changes, but what they are. The bass is crucial for that, guitar, rhythm instruments, all that kind of stuff. Very important to determine where your chordal movement is and all that. 
So the next time you're in the car and you're listening to bluegrass or you're listening to banjo music or any kind of music in general, it can do it with anything. See if you can actively listen to each part. You take, you take the song one time through, maybe that's the overview. Second time through, focus on one voice. Third time, another voice, another voice, another voice, another voice, another voice. And by voice, I mean whatever the instrument is that's, that you're focused on. And you'll pick up things that you never knew were in that music, that you never really heard before because you're giving your brain a chance to dial in specifically on one thing. And it gets kind of tough, I will say. It gets a little hard sometimes when you're just listening to rhythm guitar strumming or just trying to stay on track with that or you're just listening to anything that isn't the lead either vocal or instrumental line, uh, because that's what your ear is automatically drawn to. Um, try to pay extra special attention to those rhythm things, the bass especially. It's really going to help inform you as to what is happening in the music. And then just keep doing it. It's, it's a thing that you practice. It's a thing that doesn't happen overnight. You may just get overwhelmed the first time you try it, but keep trying it, because every time you do, you'll definitely pick up something you never heard before in that. And it, uh, and it definitely informs decisions on how you would play that song and or maybe how you would improvise on it. In a subsequent lesson, we'll talk about listening to improvise, which is a different skill altogether because it involves other people a lot, or it involves very actively listening to what is going on in your head. Um, but that's a lesson for another day. For now, we're going to try it just with recorded music and or the tabs reading along with the recording as it's playing. So give it a shot. See what you think. Be sure you, you listen critically, listen attentively, listen actively and see if you can pick out things that you didn't even know were there before. And I think you'll be surprised. Have fun.